So in the first part of the lecture, we introduced the definition of a vector space. And as I said, Rn is an example of a vector space. So the question is, what other things are vector spaces? So I want to kind of spend this part of the lecture going through a number of examples that will hopefully reinforce uh, the notion of what a vector space is. So the first one is, in some sense, the simplest vector space. Here we're going to take V to be a set containing only one element. Okay, so it only contains the zero vector. Only contains the zero vector. Okay, and this space, this set is sometimes called the zero vector space, and it's clear what, what elements belong to the set. There's only zero. What is the addition in scalar multiplication? So the addition is simply zero plus zero is zero. And the scalar multiplication in this case is C times zero will be equal to zero. So this clearly satisfy these operations, satisfy one and six, right? Because when I apply the operation, I get something back in my set V and the rest of the axioms are satisfied. Rest of, uh, rest act, uh, sorry, let me rewrite that there. Rest of axioms satisfied. And this is actually easy to check. Okay, and just if you're a little confused about what I mean here, what you need to do is go back to this list over here and check each of these conditions. But notice that your only choices for U and V are zero. So here you have zero plus zero is equal to zero plus zero. So yes, that is clear that it's equal. So you have to kind of check each of the statements there. Okay, so this is an example of a vector space. If you consider just a set containing the zero vector, that's an example of a vector space. Let's look at something a little bit more interesting, but is also related to linear algebra. We're going to take all the set of all two by two matrices. Okay, so we're just going to take a collection of everything that you can make that's a two by two matrix. And then the question is, how should we add and do scalar multiplication? Well, for addition, we're just going to use regular matrix addition. So A1, A2, A3, A4, plus another matrix, B1, B2, B3, B4, is just using regular matrix addition we get this matrix right here, where we uh, add the corresponding entries in each matrix. And our scalar multiplication is going to be matrix multiplication by a scalar. So you multiply a matrix by a constant as you normally would. So CA1, CA2, CA3, and CA4, okay? Now, this operation is closed, right? Because we produce new matrices, okay? So operation, operation sat, satisfy one and six. And that's because the operation produces uh, two by two matrix. And then we should check the rest of the axioms, but in fact, we actually did this back in chapter two. So the rest of the axioms come from section 2.1, right? And let's go back to the list of axioms here. Right. And what this is saying, so now remember our V, it contains a matrices. So this is saying that if I take two matrices, the order in which I add them doesn't matter. This is saying that the addition operation on matrices is associative. This one here, the zero vector would be the zero matrix, the matrix consisting of zeros. So all of these properties on, in this list, you can actually find them written explicitly for matrices in section 2.1. Okay. Now, as, as you're looking at this, you should notice something here is that we're not really using anything specific about two by two matrices. In fact, if I had instead had used 
uh, an M by N matrix, everything here would still be true, including what's in section 2.1. So as our third example, if you take the collection of all matrices that are M by N, that is also going to be uh, a vector space. So same reasoning. Okay, so we're quickly developing infinite families of vector spaces because we have an infinite number of choices of M and N. Oops, I'm going to go get rid of that. And, and if I go back over here, remember I'm looking at RN, so I have an infinite number of choices of N as well. So we have lots and lots of these vector spaces floating around. Now, sometimes it's actually very useful when you're trying to learn a concept is to kind of understand when things go bad. So let me give you an example of something that's not a vector space. So in this example, I want you to look at the set R2 and I greater than or equal to. And what that means is I want to take all the points in R2 where both of the coordinates are zero or bigger. And let me draw where these points are. So these are all the points in R2 in my space set here. Okay, so that the red area is my points in R2 greater than or equal to. And let's say we try to define our addition in the scalar multiplication in the same way that we would do in R2. So the question is, is this still a vector space? Okay, and the answer here is no. Okay, so why is that? It's not a vector space. And why? Well, there's a number of reasons, but I'll point out one reason, because axiom five fails. Now, let me just flip back here so you can see what axiom five is. Axiom five is saying that anytime I take a vector in there, there's another vector that will allow me to add to it and get to zero. All right, so let me show you why this fails. because 5, 6 is an element in R2 greater than or equal to, but there's no vector V1, V2 in the set such that 5, 6 plus V1, V2 is equal to 0, 0. Right, because this guy is equal to 5 plus v1, and this is equal to 6 plus v2. Right, and why is that? Well, to solve this, v1 equals negative 5, v2 is equal to negative 6, but minus 5 minus 6 is not in my set. So this set can be a, uh, cannot be a vector space because it fails one of the axioms. So if you ever have a set where at least one of the, and some operations where at least one of the axiom fails, then it fails to be a vector space. So hopefully this example here illuminates what a vector space is a little bit as well. So we'll take a short break. I will give you another example of a vector space and then we'll talk about what a subspace is.